Hey guys, I'm the 50s Kid. Ismail. Ismail, and uh, we are going to talk in this video about uh, a crank no start situation. In the previous video we did, we did no crank no start, <clears throat> which is honestly turned out to be a lot more complicated than yeah. either of us would have thought. Yeah, like we but kept it's adding difficult. points and points and yeah. points, like even stuff we didn't know about. So. Totally, totally. But this one, it's uh, it's it's not as many things, but there are still a couple of things that you you know that could go wrong for your car not to start. So I think the first one you want to talk about. Yeah. So the first one is the exact same point that we talked about in our previous video is the EWS and DME synchronization issues for the rolling code. I'm not going to get into details about that. If you want to find out exactly what the problem is and how to resolve it, go to the other video. The link will be in the bottom, of course. Uh, yeah. And the, this just just to tell you right now, well, you can identify this uh, if you get an error code uh, stored in your DME that says EWS DME anti tampering protection or something in that sort of context. So that could be one of your problems why you've got cranking but no starting. Yep. But I would say the number one cause, the number one reason why you're going to have that situation is your fuel pump. Almost certainly your fuel pump's dead. It happened like just 90% 90, 90 of the time, that's what it is. So check your fuel pump. The easiest way I think to do this is you've got a Schrader valve on the fuel rail. Just take your the, the, the fuel rail, the fuel injector cover off mm -hmm. of your engine and then go crank your car so you get some pressure built up, right? Take off the Schrader valve and just get a little flat head, flat head screw flex, whatever. Yeah. Press, press down on the Schrader valve, you should see a little spurt of gas. If you don't see that little spurt of gas, Fuel pump. And okay. it should be a strong spurt too. Strong it's spurt. not just like if you press on it and it's like weak, just oozing out fuel, then that's not good fuel pressure. It should, yeah. be, it should be like hit your face kind of. Yeah, there yeah. you go. Yeah, I mean, yeah. So don't don't get your face right over it. Oh, yeah. Obviously, no, yeah. but just pre, you know, just you don't get close to it. Just press the thing down. You should see some gas shooting out. Yeah. Then you know your fuel pump is good. Okay. If your fuel pump is bad. You want to check your fuel pump fuse. I don't know the number of it offhand, uh, but do a Google search. Google knows which fuse number it is. Or check the like in in the glove box right where the if, fuse are. The, if you, you have should that. have, of course, like you know the old cars like you yeah. might not. Have I did it. not have it. Yeah. I had to get one from a junkyard. Yeah, exactly what I did. <laughs> <laughs> you should have that. You know, it's uh, a little key. It's a little. Yeah, it exactly. explains what is what. So yeah. check your fuel pump fuse. If you don't have that little key, then just look it up on Google. They'll tell you which fuse it is. Yep. All that stuff. Check that. And then the, the the other thing that could be bad is the fuel pump relay, which actually is, is a little harder to get to. You actually have to take the glove box out and then you have to take the fuels, the fuse, you have to like unlatch the fuse bot, the fuse panel mm -hmm. and take it down and the, and the fuel pump relay is on top of it. So again, do a Google search and you'll see information on which one it is. But that's, uh, you know, actually testing a relay and stuff is outside the scope of this video. But there are some other videos on YouTube that can help you to do that. Number three is going to be the ignition fuse, which I've done another video about, and I will link that down in the description. There's a little bank of five fuses that's inside the electronics box, and it's going to be the middle fuel, middle fuse. It's a 20 amp fuse. Yeah. Check that fuse to make sure it's good. The electronics box is the one under the hood where the DME is. Yes. So in E46s, it should be on the right, like driver's side, all the way right below the windshield. And then on E39s, it's on the other side, and then the rest of the cars, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Basically, on the right or left. It's like a small black yeah. box with five slits through it. It's kind of difficult to open it and try to figure out, you know, to check. The, oh, okay, perfect. You got one right here. I got one right here. There it looks go. like this. Exactly. This is what it looks like. So yeah. you're looking under the hood. We get focus on that, you stupid thing. <laughs> Focusing on... Okay, anyway, it looks like this basically and the little cover slides off to the side and then you can take the fuses out one by one and check them. Of course, so the easiest it. way is to get the, the test... Uh, the, yeah, you can get your little... Uh, you can get tip. your... You can get a, a, a DVOM, a multimeter, and you should be able to reach through the top there. You actually might not be able to get... Yeah, there should be, there should be room to touch the top of the fuse through the little, little slots right there. Yep. So that's what they give you the slots. So that's that. You want to check that ignition fuse, make sure it's good, because if it's not good, the thing's not going to start. Next thing? Yes, next thing is your crank sensor. So you have three crank sensors. You got the crankshaft 
position sensor, you got the camshaft position sensor for the intake, and you got the camshaft position sensor for the exhaust. Now, most of our talk about, especially about this, like we know the location for the M54 engines, M56, M52, and TU, but for the for the like the E39s or the E38 with the V8s, uh, M62, and so on, Google it. Okay, <laughs> so the the locations of these three sensors, one is right behind the starter on the on the body of the engine. Uh, the camshaft for the intake is right on the right side of the valve cover, right behind the, the vano solenoid. The camshaft one is on the left where that uh, secondary air pump valve is. It's right next to it, or you should you should be able to see it. it's right there on the uh, on the near the passenger side, right above the exhaust manifold. And then one thing I want to add to be able to test and see if your crank position sensor or camshaft position sensors are good or not is that you should know that they put out a square wave signal. Now most of us yeah. are not going to have uh, you know the tools to actually graph the signal output, but most of us will have uh, a simple multimeter. So if you hook up to the negative and then you hook up to the signal wire, you should see the voltage switching between zero volts and five volts. You'll see I'm going well, up and down. You already had a down. video about that, but I it was did. for the, the oil level sensor. But yeah. it's a similar, similar kind of exact thing. Similar kind yeah. of thing, you know, on, you know, but uh, if, if the sensor's dead, you won't see that signal at all. And if that signal is there, and if it's you know switching between, if it if it's a square wave signal, you'll just see the voltage switching up and down. So that one simple test will let you know if your sensor is working or not. So that's one thing you can also, do. Also, I want to add: first thing you do when you have that problem is check your codes. Like I said in the oh, previous yeah. video, get a BMW scanner. They're cheap on Amazon, like 20, 30, even 40 bucks. It will save your life and it will save you a lot of money of going to mechanics or asking a lot of people about, you know, what's wrong with this car and what's not. If you have any one of these, like the EWS DME uh, or the crank position sensors, it will tell you. They're just going to throw a code. So yeah. you'll know where to start. And one thing I want to add is that you might need a BMW scanner, but I think you also need just a regular OBD2 scanner that has live data. I'll put a, a link in the description to one for that because that's going to be really helpful, especially for diagnosing things like this. You want to look at your fuel trims to kind of help to help determine, you know, what your problems are in these situations. So it doesn't hurt to have one of those and read normal DTC codes. Yeah. One more thing that you had mentioned before, do not buy aftermarket position sensors yeah. bank or camshafts yeah they are crap yeah pretty much yeah. so you want to get the oem sensors or at least oem brands okay go for good yeah. brands when you're when you're buying I've those gone through don't like get the ebay chinese ones before i just yeah. you know i said no yeah don't get no the more. ebay chinese things yeah beyond that fast tech fast tech is an acronym pretty common old school kind of acronym these are the basic things you need for any engine to run and you need to check these you need to check if you have fuel we already mentioned that one fuel that's a basic component you need to check if you have air which means that you need to check if you're if you're you know you need to make sure that you don't have like a massive vacuum leak somewhere in your system because if there's unmetered air getting in it's you know you could your, your car might not start there or as simple as having a clogged air filter that there you go spark you want to check your you want to check and make sure that all of your coils are still working that there's 12 volts going to your coils that would be the ignition fuse right there when that ignition fuse blows you've got no 12 volts going to your coils so none of your coils are going to work now it is very unlikely that all six of your ignition coils are actually going to go bad at the same time. Yeah. So that's why we kind of don't exactly mention those. In the old days, you used to have one coil that would then feed the spark plug. So it was common for one coil. Yeah, in a distributor type system. It was common for a coil to go bad. Yeah. But now it's kind of, you know, they've gotten it a little, they've, they've advanced the, the technology. Unlikely that you're going to have six bad coils. You could have well, one maybe, but I suppose it could happen. But... You could have bad spark plugs, possibly something could have happened. Your spark plugs could be so old at this point, you never changed them and they're just so corroded and now you're getting starting issues, entirely possible. Timing, something something might be off with your timing. It's, it's I guess it could happen. Maybe somebody fiddled with it. Whatever your situation is, you know, maybe you went in and did a job, maybe you tried to repair your Vanos and you tried to turn the engine over while you had the Vanos out and mm -hmm. you skipped your timing. Yep. Entirely possible. Yep. yep. 
check your timing. Make sure your timing is good. Exhaust, make sure your exhaust is not plugged up. If your exhaust is not is plugged up, the car's not gonna be able to breathe. It's not gonna be able to start. Is there a way of finding out if your exhaust is plugged if you can't start the car? Uh, what I would say is um, you could take out the, the O2 sensors and um, yeah. yeah, if you, and yeah. basically you, you have a, uh, they, they make a meter, you can rent it actually. They make a, an exhaust uh, back pressure reader. So you just kind of stick it down and it's kind of like a compression gauge, honestly. And it just, it's got a little rubber stopper on the end of it uh -huh. and you just hold it down in the hole where the spark plug hole That's is, crank it. And if your exhaust is plugged, you'll have pressure on there where you shouldn't have it, so. Or like even, even if it's simple as just taking out the sensors, you'll get some like, you'll get an exhaust outlet. It'll sound mm -hmm. loud, but mm -hmm. you'll get an exhaust outlet, which might yeah. help you yeah, know, if you in take actually the O2, starting the car. If you take the O2s out and yeah, you, at that point you might be able to start the car yeah. if your exhaust was plugged up. So there you go. That is one thing you should check. And then of course, compression. You need to make sure that the engine has compression. Now, it happens with the E46s, the E39s, yeah. with these engines, they overheat, which is almost certainly Maybe why you're watching this, not almost certainly, but <laughs> yeah. probably why you're watching Hopefully this. Hopefully not. I would say fuel and compression are those the two big causes of this issue. People, they overheat their cars, their head warps, and you lose compression. If you don't have enough compression, the engine's not going to start and it's not going to run. And still, it's easy. You go to any auto parts store, you can, you can rent out a compression test. I know I've done yeah. that multiple times. Exactly. Yeah. Do a compression test. I've got a video. Link in yep. the description. There, there are lots of things involved with making sure that your engine runs, is able to run. Not as many as a crank, obviously, oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but there are. Anyway, guys, yeah. I hope this helped you out. I hope you learned something from this video. If it did, give me a thumbs up. Give us a thumbs up. <laughs> Subscribe if you want to see more. If you have issues related to keys, EWS modules, give Ismail a call. He can help you out. His information is going to be in the description. I want to thank you guys for watching. Thanks everyone for watching and uh, hopefully I'll be back soon for another video. <laughs>